Hello there and welcome to part 18 of Julian Huxley's Essays in Popular Science and Aldous Huxley's A Brave New World. And just before I continue, I never thought I'd be talking about sex so much. <laughs> There's just so much to do with it, isn't there? Um, you know, you start off with one thing and then it leads you down a different path. It just goes deeper down the rabbit hole, as they say. And um, it's amazing how one thing connects to another. So briefly, on the last... Uh, uh, video I went in about spoke about Desmond Morris and the um, going into detail about the pair bonding process there how it kind of all works and fits together um, and how important it is um, and then before then I mentioned uh, uh, 1984 because here in the Brave New World we're reading on about how they're whitewashing history um, and and uh, the, you know the suppression of all books uh, by a certain date and um, and here it reads there were some things called pyramids for example uh, and a man called Shakespeare but you never heard of them of course and so just like in a brave new world they, sorry uh, 1984 uh, people don't know their history um, it says here such are the advantages of scientific education so it's almost like programming indoctrination you know like sleep teaching and all of that it's all um, telling them uh, you know what the controllers want them to um, to remember, not necessarily the truth. Um, and I was going to mention about Ford, um, <coughs> because you've got <coughs> Ford motor cars, haven't you? Um, so the introduction of a Ford's first T model, um, it's saying here it's chosen as the opening date for the new era. Um, and do you remember when, in the other videos, I spoke about uh, the cross, and then you take a you top off the cross, and you get T for Ford, um, because it, yeah, it, it, so um, chosen it. So the introduction of the first Ford T model, chosen as the opening date of a new era. And there is he's saying, ending is better than mending. Ended is better than mending because Ford in a way symbols um, pr mass production um, of the same products, right? And so they're, they're saying, oh, you know, well, we mass produce human beings artificially. So Ford is a good, uh, you know, good name. It's, it's a good, um, you know, um, it symbolises, you know, a um, brave new world. Because as I said, there was a thing, as I've said before, called Christianity, and this is why it's, you know Christianity resembles old value systems, old family value systems, the old world vivi vivi vivarious or whatever it's called, uh, reproduction, um, and all that goes with it. Um, so see, all crosses had their tops cut and became T's. There was also a thing called, it's referring to um, the past here. There was also a thing called God. Um, but he's saying we have the world state now and Ford's Day and Ford's Day celebrations and community sings and uh, solid, solidary services and he's talking about the past here there was a thing called heaven but all, this, all the same they used to drink enormous quantities of alcohol um, and, and meat, so much meat so um, and there was a th yeah, there was a thing called the soul and a thing called immortality. So, um, old-fashioned spiritual um, traditions and things like that. Well, I can go deeper than that. You know, um, I believe there's a soul. I believe we all he each have one. Um, so um, that can connect to you know immortality. Um, and he said, but they also used to take uh, <coughs> morphia or morphine and cocaine. So these are the recreational drugs. I mentioned earlier that um, Jude, Aldous Huxley, in his book uh, Brave New World Revised, he really went into you know um, the real practicality of inventing some kind of amazing drug. In, in the Brave New World, I think they call it Soma or something like that. And it's this wonder drug that you can take and you can trip and you can hallucinate, but you get no hangover whatsoever. So there's no side effects. So it's like the perfect utopian kind of... Um, drug for controlling people, if you ever feel that, you know, reality is a little bit too much for you, this daily 
um, mechanical routine of your life that you're born into because of your scientific caste system, you can just escape immediately without any hangover, without any side effects. And when you look at people, I mean, probably most people have done it at some points in their life, you know, or um, or even every Friday night, get drunk to escape the, um, you know, the boring kind of mechanical daily um, routine of your job. Uh, but there's a price to pay because you get hangover. Uh, and you get a bit low the next day, and then of course worse cocaine uh, and other drugs like that. So um, yeah, so they used to take morphine and cocaine, um, and then um, two thousand pharmacologists and biochemists were sub subsidised in AF one seventy eight. So um, talking about the pharmaceutical um, replacement for. Um, cocaine and alcohol and things like that. Six years later it was being produced commercially, the perfect drug, as we just spoke about. Euphoric, narcotic, pleasantly hallucinant. All the advantages of Christianity and alcohol, none of their defects. Uh, no hangover from the alcohol and uh, none of the uh, disadvantages, they say, with the uh, Christianity. <clears throat> yeah, take a holiday from reality whenever you like and come back without so much as a headache or a mythology. <laughs> uh, yeah, stability was practically assured. One cubic centimetre cures ten gloomy sentiments. Uh, it only remains to conquer old age. Um, um, gonadal hormones, transfusion of blood, young blood, magnesium salts. Um, that is right on par with Julian Huxley's work, isn't it, when he's talking about uh, these um, scientists grafting testicles onto subjects and reversing the age temporarily and all of that. Um, basically give, feeding them um, you know, new, new hormones. Um but it did say in that, didn't it? Do we need, you know, should we give everybody this, these uh, rejuvenating um, um, methods? You know, should, should everybody be um, allowed to have to have this treatment, this scientific treatement? Because um, because he was going into eugenics, wasn't he, and, and saying undesirables really shouldn't be encouraged to live too long and be virile and all of that. So, um, but here it says all the psychological stigma of old age. Have been abolished. So in a brave new world, people don't people don't see old people. They can be maybe thirty or fifty five. They're not sure because they just maintained to um, basically um, stay at a functional level. And then, and then and then you know I think they're programmed to live to about seventy or something like that. I'm not sure. But you don't see old people. You don't see old age and, senile, and people going senile and all of that and having bad hips and whatever. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Yeah, work, play at 60. <laughs> work, play. Yeah, at 60, our powers and tastes are what they were at 17. Old men in the bad old days used to renounce, retire, take to religion, spend their time reading, thinking, thinking, and he's angry at that. Um, yeah, so thinking is not good <laughs> in the brave new world. Now such is progress. The old men work, the old men copulate, the old men have no time, no leisure from pleasure. Not a moment to sit down and think. Or if they, or if ever by some unlucky chance, such a crevice of time should yawn in the solid substance of their distractions. There is always soma. That's, that's the right word, as I, as I just spoke of. There's always soma. Delicious soma. Half a Grammy for half a holiday. A Grammy for a weekend, <laughs> two Grammys for a trip to the gorgeous east, three for a dark eternity on the moon, returning yeah, from whence they came or something like that. So I made a little note here about uh, virtual reality, because um, it's kind of sounding like virtual reality, isn't it? And with that um, can come the possibility of the brain chip that uh, many... Um, Researchers have been warning people about not just the identification chip, but an actual brain chip that can um, 
redirect your thoughts, you know, um, beam thoughts into your brain, uh, you know, so your thoughts aren't your own, if they're, um, if they still are really, you know. And, but basically, you know, you can virtual reality trip when this reality becomes, uh, you know, a little too much for you. So that's, prob that's possibly even more effective than Soma. So that's an idea to keep in mind. <clears throat> and I think I am at the end of this now. I, I didn't want to continue to... I'm not going to... wasn't going to read through the whole book of Brave New World, but... Um, uh, you know, I think we've managed to connect some dots here. Um, I hope, I hope so. Anyway, I hope that you know, whoever is watching this or will watch it can kind of at least connect a few dots so that you can see that um, Brave New World is not science fiction. It's coming true, and and we're I believe we're in the middle of it. Um, we are in the middle of this. Brave New World, this scientific dictatorship, and um, we need to be aware of it, basically. And so, in the last few chapters, and it will be the last few chapters, and there's not going to be another ten or anything like that, I'm going to just um, have a few final thoughts um, about, you know, how Brave New World applies to my life, your life, and your children's life and their, your children's children, if, if you, you know, your grandchildren, etc. Um, you know, the real implication, implications of it and what we can do to, um, to make sure it, it doesn't uh, go past a certain point where there's that, you know, point of no return where um, we really are living in, in a science fiction movie, just as I've just been describing. So yeah, um, the, fight, the, the, the last few chapters are final thoughts, so um, come with me and join me on that. I'll see you in part 19.